Hi, my name is Kristen Deason, and I'm the Caribbean Regional Representative for GGGI, the Global Green Growth Institute. And I'm going to talk a little bit today about the activities that we're working on in the Caribbean around NDC accounting, tracking, and modeling. I'll start by just giving a quick overview of GGGI in case anyone is not familiar with us. We are an intergovernmental international organization based in South Korea focused on working with the governments of developing countries to promote environmentally sustainable, inclusive economic growth. GGGI now has programs in over 30 countries and OECS became our first organizational member in 2019. And by virtue of this membership, we are now working with several OECS member states, mainly on projects related to climate change, renewable energy and climate finance. One of the main projects we're working on this year is the CAP project or the Climate Action Enhancement Package. This project is aimed at supporting countries in revising their NDCs and also in fast tracking their progress toward meeting the NDC goals. This project is organized through the NDC partnership funded by the partners that are listed at the bottom of this slide. And GGGI is working on this project in three Caribbean countries, St. Lucia, Grenada, and Antigua and Barbuda. We're working on different tasks in each country, mainly focused on um, the second piece of what I mentioned previously, which is supporting countries in making progress toward fast tracking achievement of their NDC goals. So in St. Lucia, we are working on three tasks related to fossil fuel taxation and subsidy modeling, climate financing strategy, and development of a system to help track climate budgeting. In Grenada, we're working on data collection and development of data gathering processes in a number of specific sectors. And in Antigua and Barbuda, we're working on several tasks. We are working on developing a draft NDC implementation plan, planning for stakeholder outreach and communications around that plan. We are developing a framework for an MRV strategy and also working on a task relating to facilitating inclusive access to renewable energy for all well, parts of the population. And lastly, we are working together with some other partners on developing a climate resilient insurance program. So not all of these tasks are relevant to today's topic, which is NDC tracking, accounting, and modeling. But in the subsequent slides, I'm going to go into a bit of the detail around um, some of the tasks that are related to that topic. So to start with, I'll talk a little bit about our work on fossil fuel taxation and subsidy modeling in St. Lucia. It is thought that low rates of taxation is one driver of consumption of fossil fuel in the country. So we are modeling various policy scenarios to look at how the taxation schemes for fossil fuels could be adjusted and what the effects would be in terms of carbon emissions and on government revenues. On this task, we're working closely with WRI, the World Resources Institute, they are working on a related task doing microeconomic modeling to ensure that the proposed schemes do not unfairly affect any specific segments of the population and that the effects are equitable. To do the modeling work, we are building a modeling structure using the green economy modeling or GEM principles tailored to the St. Lucia context. This is a modular model that includes representations for the socioeconomic and natural capital elements, the energy system and carbon emissions, and selected sectors. The model is built based on systems thinking principles and using system dynamic tools, including the Vensim software. This is paired with a GSI integrated fiscal framework model for analysis specific to the energy sector. We are now currently gathering existing data on subsidy and tax revenues from the customs department, the statistics department, LUSELEC and private sector distributors and the output of this task will be recommended future fossil fuel subsidy and task, tax, excuse me, task, tax schemes that would result in reduced emissions and increased revenues, but not in, inequitable effects on the population. We are also working on a climate financing strategy for St. Lucia. So to meet its NDC goals, St. Lucia, like many countries, will need to find ways to finance the relevant projects and programs that will allow for achievement of these goals. So GGI is working with the government to devise a strategy for doing this. We're exploring the possibility of putting into place some different innovative financing mechanisms, such as national financing vehicles, debt for climate swaps, green bonds, and public-private partnerships in order to catalyze investment from domestic, international, and private sector sources to help make the NDC goals achievable. And the slide here shows elements of 
some of the different aspects of the task that we've been working on. Also a key part is engagement of stakeholders to really set the stage for um, putting in place these various mechanisms that we're proposing. The third task that we're working on in St. Lucia is development of a tool for climate budget tracking um, or counting. When addressing, when addressing climate goals, it's really key for countries to track spending on projects related to these goals, not just progress toward the goals themselves, to make sure that resources are properly prioritized according to the country's ambitions. So in St. Lucia, GGI is working with the government to incorporate tracking of climate change related spending into the current budgeting process so that spending and investments related to NDCs and climate action can be accurately tracked and measured. So as a basis for this, we're using the, the current budgeting process. As you can see in the slide here, capacity building is an important aspect of this project, not just to train um, people on how to use the tool, but also in developing the tool to ensure that there's buy-in and, and understanding in all elements of the, the process and that we've defined an effective way to do this that won't be too burdensome um, when it's being used in the future. In Grenada, we're working on a task related to data collection and development of data gathering processes that'll be used in the future. Uh, we're working on this related to the sectors listed here, waste, agriculture, refrigeration and air conditioning, and forestry, and also working closely on this task with our partners at FAO and IRENA, who are also working on the, the CAP project. Um, the barrier in these areas in, in Grenada was that there is not much existing data in these sectors to be able to contribute to adding new sectors to the revised NDC. So our work is really aimed at putting processes into place to support more robust data collection um, in the future to allow for tracking and monitoring of these sectors as it relates to carbon emissions and NDC goals. All right, moving on to talk about some of our work in Antigua and Barbuda. As I mentioned, we're working on an MRV framework and strategy there. And our approach um, is as follows. So when you think about MRV, you know, it's not, it's not just a system, it's, it's more than that. It's the system that, that holds the data, of course, but it's also defining the processes and the data flows that will allow for collection of that data in the most efficient manner possible. It's also about developing institutional arrangements to ensure that we have agreement on the methods that we're going to use to collect and, and share this data, and also ensuring that there's expertise um, to ensure that the system can be supported and implemented as, as time goes forward. So the first thing that we're doing in our approach is stock taking of, of current activities and doing a gap analysis. Um, we're also ensuring close coordination and alignment with related activities initiatives. I'm skipping around a little bit here, but that's really important because we found that there's a lot of work going on that's related to tracking of, of NDC goals. And it's important that all that work is coordinated so there's not duplicate work done or, or duplicate data produced. We're also doing quite a bit of work around stakeholder engagement, similar to one of the other tasks that I, that I spoke about, and also development of, of indicators. I think that's something that um, maybe might seem obvious for each one, but, but it's really not. It's important to come to agreement on how we're actually going to measure progress towards NDC goals, and not just the goals themselves, but measuring how we're doing on the actions that we've defined to achieve those goals. We're also using the DPSIR approach, which uses drivers, pressures, state impacts, and responses to develop some of these indicators that I was mentioning. Um, our MRV expert uh, specialist on this task is Justin Goodwin, and he's going to be speaking on the, the panel session of this webinar. So he'll provide some additional information on this then and also be available for questions. I think I'm nearing the end of my allocated time, but I, I just wanted to touch on some of the other activities that we're working on on the CAP project in Antigua and Barbuda, not necessarily closely related to the NDC uh, tracking and modeling, but I wanted to mention them anyway. We are working on an NDC implementation strategy. So again, lots of stakeholder engagement involved there to capture a lot of the planning work that's already been done around planning projects and initiatives that will, that will be done to meet the NDC goals. We are also developing a stakeholder communications plan around that strategy, which will involve uh, a number of different aspects with stakeholders inside and outside the government. And also part of that is developing a 
section of the website, which will be public facing to show the NDC goals and, and progress toward them that gets updated on a regular basis. We're also working on a task on inclusive access to renewable energy. And so the objective here is that as Antigua goes through its transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy to ensure that all parts of the population are able to participate in that and, and finding ways to make that happen. So we're exploring some, some different possible programs that might be able to facilitate that, including leasing schemes and, and green bonds, some of the ideas that we're thinking about. The last one listed here, we are working together with some of our other partners on development of a climate resilient insurance scheme. So this is intended to be a mandatory scheme that would cover farmers, fishers, and, and small business owners, basically against climatic events so that when these climatic events happen, that it doesn't have such a devastating effect on people's assets and, and incomes. And just to wrap up, thank you very much for your participation in, the, in this webinar and for watching this video. Uh, we really appreciate the work that the UNFCCC MRV Hub has done in bringing everyone together for this event today. I think it's, it's very important that we continue to share information and, and share knowledge and approaches across the region because I think there's, there's a lot to be learned and a lot to be done in terms of making our work more efficient as we learn from each other what some of the best approaches are. I haven't gone into too much detail in this, in this presentation, but hopefully I've given you a good overview of the work that GGI is doing and will be available on the, the panel to answer any additional questions that anyone has. I will be there as well as some of my colleagues who are working on these tasks. And also if you have any additional questions, feel free to contact us via email. Thank you.